Anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right, Jared. How are you? Sober. Ha <laughs> ha. If you yeah. know, you know. If you know, you know. Is the noise gate like the Stargate? It's 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 nothing like the Stargate. Um, it's no. It, it is it is a technical marvel though. Um Hey Jared. Um here is another episode of No Your Oh, wait. Yeah, no. It's a bye week. It's a this bye is, week. This is no and no your enemy because there's no enemy no, no, you're to enemy. know uh, uh, you're funny jared you're there's funny. no there's no enemy should, to should, know you, this week it is a bye week. let me let me stick to the jokes not you yeah mm, mm. <laughs> yeah. all right so, well with no enemy to know this week um we're going to revisit because we haven't got a chance to do one of these with the football season underway we, we're going to revisit our mock class. Uh, we have done a couple, one of these, I believe, since um, July. Camp. Since camp. Yeah, I don't think we've done a mock since July. So here we are again. Things have changed a bit in the recruiting world for Ohio State. The class is mostly in place. If we zip through this quick enough, Kyle, and we'll we'll see how chatty uh, we in the chat are. Um, if we zip through this fast enough, we might take a peek into the 2025 class as well. I'm well, prepared to do that. Let's not waste any time, shall we? I'm prepared to do that. Yeah, let's not waste any more time. Um, Ohio State's 2024 class already in the class. Quarterback Air Noland. Winner. Winner. Running backs, James Peoples, Jordan Lyle, and Sam William Dixon. It's a three, three running back class. All three are winners, Jared. All three are winners. Um, Sam William Dixon, uh, maybe maybe uh, not a true running back. May, maybe um, an athlete of sort. It depends. I'm not. I'm not a... How how we're going to use Sam William Dixon, I, I think, is not uh, totally determined yet at this point. We'll see. We'll see how the Sam William Dixon uh, story plays out over time. But the important part is that he is a dynamic athlete and he's in this he's in this recruiting class. Those are the two important things to know there. He's the next X, maybe. The next X, the next Evan Pryor, although we still need to see Evan Pryor be uh, the current Evan Pryor. My my conspiracy theory that they were saving him for the Notre Dame game did not play out. <laughs> no, no, that didn't. Uh, wide receivers, we have uh, Jeremiah J.J. Smith, uh, Mylon Graham. The best and in the country at any position. Jeremiah McClellan. Yeah, um, Jeremiah McClellan looked like he wasn't going to come for a minute, but then he committed and now he's a part of the class. Uh, Smith and Graham have had the has been locking down the class for a long time. No, for the millionth time, I I am not worried about JJ Smith uh, no. flipping or decommitting or anything along those lines. Yep. Two Jeremiah's, both receivers. That feels statistically unlikely. Eh. Wait till you find out. Wait till you find out what two of the offensive linemen are named. Um, so I, I do think Ohio state potentially adds a fourth wide receiver to their existing three in this class. I don't think it can be just anybody. I do think it has to be the right person. And that person right now, and I'm going to add a fourth member to this class. Uh, he's currently committed to Miami. Um, as a theme you might pick up in this episode is I don't consider commitments to Miami to be uh, all that committed. We'll get to maybe a couple more later, uh, but this is Chance Robinson. Um, he has a couple visits in line for Ohio State, a couple possible visits in line for Ohio State. The official visit as of right now is the Penn State game is October 21st. So he'll be um, back on campus. I believe he was just on campus for 
I think it was Western Kentucky. Uh, but he'll be back on campus or is official uh, for the Penn State game. Uh, that Penn State game, uh, not a big surprise. Anyone should be a um, big recruiting weekend for Ohio State. So we'll keep an eye out on Chance Robinson. Mm-hmm. Tight ends, Kyle. I think the tight ends are are marked down in pen. I think I think we're finalized on the tight ends. I agree. I agree. I, we got a uh, Demarion Witten and Max LeBlanc. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's pretty solidified right there. At offensive the, lineman, Jared. Offensive line. I like this class. Um, I do too. I do too. The the recruiting stars aren't huge, but they solidified four of these guys quickly. Um, it is a very not totally in state, but very regional class. Um, you have the twins, Devonte and De- and Deontay Armstrong. Um, Deontay is marked as an offensive tackle. Devonte plays guard at, in high school. They play next to each other. They say because you have to figure that their body types are somewhat similar, seeing as how they're twins. Um, and, and yes, they're identical. Um, that you'd think Devonte could also maybe play offensive tackle. So Deontay, we're calling a tackle. Devonte, we're calling a tackle or guard. Um, then at the guard position, you have Mark Nave and Ian or Ian Moore. Um, and then... And I've been saying this, Kyle, for months now. For months now. Ohio State needs another, like, out-of-state, high-profile offensive lineman in this class, preferably a tackle. Yeah, that, that's that's one thing that Ohio State's missing from this class is, like, a high-profile uh, offensive lineman here and offensive tackle specifically i mean i yes i i I, li- I like what they have they're the interior they got on lock i i love this class from an interior standpoint i really really wanted like gerby lambert or brandon baker but they went to notre dame and texas respectively um there are some other offensive tackles maybe that they could have gotten this class but didn't quite work out uh, yeah, ba- Baker. Still- Baker was a Baker was a big miss. I I was hopeful, but obviously, as it got closer, it didn't seem likely. But that was that would have been the that would have been the big big one for uh, Ohio I'd State. Been, I'd have been just as happy if Gerby Lambert. But yeah, uh, just just add just add Baker to yet another Mater Day heartbreak. Uh, yeah. We always think we're gonna, and then we never do. Nope. Went after uh, went after some Texas tea. Yep. Uh, I I I had always heard that coming as far east as Ohio was going to be a uh, a difficult sell for him, Co- going all the way from California to Ohio. Um, I I had always heard that like even Texas was a bit of a stretch for him, but you know, Texas is still considerably closer um, to California than Ohio is, but you know, it is what it is still out there. Um, and maybe uh, what maybe feels like Ohio state's last chance to add a, a high profile offensive lineman to this class is Jordan Seton, uh, Jordan Seton playing, at the IMG Academy in Florida. Uh, Now, the thing is about Seton, I've been wanting a true offensive tackle added to this class. Seton is currently marked as an interior offensive lineman. Now, I've seen it said that a lot of people believe he could or should or will play tackle at the next level. Um, I believe he he plays tackle now. So he's either a really good offensive tackle or the best guard in the country. He's currently marked as the number one interior offensive lineman in the country. But there's a lot of people who think he can still play tackle at the next level. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Jordan Seaton would be an amazing addition to this class, an absolutely amazing addition to this class. I want him in this class. Uh, I, I do still fear about Ohio State's positioning at the offensive tackle position. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that plays out. That's that's about we'll, just, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, it's a bit of a disappointment not getting either Baker or Lambert for sure. Need hit the portal early to help on the O-line. Something hairball has done exceedingly well. Uh, you're you're not wrong. Uh, in fact, you're right. You're very, very right. Yeah, they, they're going to need. I say it needs to land a, a high profile offensive tackle out of the portal this next cycle. Uh, that I 100 percent agree on. And also maybe the cycle after that. We'll see. Yep, yep. Moving on to the defense. Moving on to the defense. Ohio State uh, recently adds Eric Mensa to the defensive tackle crew, along with Justin Scott. Um, they flipped Eric Mensa from Virginia Tech. Uh, I've heard Mensa um, described as a, a high ceiling guy. Maybe not going to be immediately ready, but has a high ceiling. So when you have uh, a, a huge piece in place like Justin Scott, you can maybe go and, you know, I, and I think it's a I don't want to call Mensa a quote unquote project player. I, I think that undersells who he is and what he's capable of. But I do think that allows you to go after someone who, again, maybe isn't fully baked yet but like i said has a super high ceiling and i yep. think that's what they get with eric mensa defensive end position added edric houston not terribly long ago uh, he looks like a run stopper probably builds into a dt yeah no he's absolutely a dt i i've yeah, seen no, he, he I've absolutely seen, is i've seen six people, four three ten uh mensa Oh, oh no, Mensa 63290. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that's what we're talking. I assume that's what Woody was talking about. Um yeah, me, me, that's that's sort of what I mean when I say like he's not done baking yet. Like he I've seen it discussed. Is he a defensive end? Is he like a strong side defensive end or is he a three tech defensive tackle? Ohio State sees him as a three tech defensive tackle. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. Zach, doing recruiting talk. Wish the class was a little deeper uh, before we had to move to project adjacent dudes. Uh, the defensive tackle position is in good shape. I, I don't and, and I don't think. I, I don't want you to come away thinking Mensa is like a straight up project guy. That's that's not. I, I don't want you to walk away thinking that. It's just that you have Justin Scott in place who they do feel like can be ready right away. And therefore they don't feel the pressure to get someone else who can be ready right away. Does that make sense? Um, oh, and by the way, I wanted to say Jordan Seaton official visit 11, 11. Uh, he'll be on campus 11, 11. Uh, so you get the dude on campus. That's a huge part of the battle. Hopefully they can secure. Hopefully they can secure Jordan Seaton on 11, 11. Um, Eric Mensa, uh, was on campus. He was on campus. I, I forget for which one of the games, um, defensive end talk about Edric Houston. Um, We've talked about uh, Ernest Wilner, who is ha, Ernest Wilner Jr., who's a guy who has uh, jumped in and out of my mock classes through the summer. Um, he's sort of one of the defensive ends who has like been around and near the mock for a long, long time. I think he sort of fell off in regard in regards to Ohio State, but 
think there's maybe a bit of a re- renewed spirit there. So right now I have him as the second and probably final member of the defensive end class. But for, for the sake of this mock, the final of the defensive end class, I, I do think that there's some just outside the mock defensive ends who uh, I wouldn't completely rule out yet. Mm-hmm. All right, what linebackers here. Yeah, go. I would say linebackers here. We currently have Peyton Pierce and uh, Garrett Stover, which yes. if you're new listening to, yes, it is that Stover. So <laughs> that is his cousin. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think. I think on the notes here, Jared, there's maybe room for one more linebacker in this class here. Yeah. Uh, Nicholas Rodriguez. Uh, Nicholas Rodriguez is currently committed to Missouri. Uh, I, he, I'm pretty sure he has a, a, a visit scheduled here uh, soon, although I didn't write down what that date is. Um, I, I think that if Ohio State were to offer or... I think I think that's a a a high potential flip for one Nicholas Rodriguez. All right, and they're mostly the corn- flips from here on out. Just so everyone knows, this yeah, yeah. this class got picked up quickly. Mm-hmm. And then the corners here, Jared. Uh, we got <laughs> got the uh, got some. Big names here. We got uh, Bryce West. We got Aaron Scott, as well as uh, Miles Lockhart from uh, from Arizona as well in this class. Yeah. Uh, and for anyone who might not follow recruiting all that closely, West and Scott are both from the uh, state of Ohio. Yeah, it's a great corner class, Woody. And here's the thing. Yep. I don't think they're done yet. Um you know, they, they were trying to get Kobe Black, but getting Kobe Black out of Texas was always going to be uh, difficult. Uh, and, and I don't and I don't think they're going to win that. I think the last time we did a mock, I still had Kobe Black in the class. And even then, I acknowledged that it was a bit of a long shot. Um, and I've officially uh, given up on on Kobe Black as an Ohio State Buckeye, unfortunately. Um, I am, however, going to talk about uh, Terry on Nichols, uh, who's currently uh, committed to Kentucky. But uh, like I said, a lot of these guys are currently committed elsewhere because this class, for whatever reason, just got picked up very quickly. Um, yeah, so I, I think it's if all of the guys I'll say this of all of the guys who I've mentioned, I think. Nichols might be one of the bigger flyer picks in here. One of the the guys who I'm among the guys who I'm least sure about, Uh, but he's a Cincinnati kid. He's an Ohio kid, uh, went south to Kentucky. You know, he like the next guy we're going to talk about. Sometimes you come back to these Ohio kids later when you miss on some national prospects and sometimes they're excited to be a Buckeye and sometimes they get a chip on their shoulder and be like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be your backup plan to Kobe black. And I respect either choice. Quite frankly, I, I, I understand that sort of defiant nature of like, no, I don't want to be, I don't want to be your silver medal, but I also understand and respect sort of putting that pride away and doing what's best for you. Even if maybe you got your feelings hurt the first time around. Um, I understand and respect both positions there. And I think that's the position that maybe Nichols might find himself in with Ohio state. And maybe the situation Reggie powers finds himself with, uh, As he has, Kyle, right before we started recording this, decommitted from Michigan State. Yeah, definitely, definitely a name to keep an eye out for. That was curious to see if there's going to be any more from that program to see if there's going to be any more decommits, though. But yeah, I, I have to imagine. I have to imagine so. I have to imagine so. 
Yeah, so definitely keep definitely keep an eye out for for uh, Reggie Powers to see. Yeah, to see see what he plans on doing here. But I think I think Ohio State, if they want him, could go and and grab him here. Well, let me rephrase that. <laughs> if they tell if they tell Reggie we want you, I'm, I feel pretty good chance that Ohio State would get him. Yeah, it's um, I Kyle, letting you know because I was working on this mock on and off during the course of this day. I had Reggie Powers in this mock before he decommitted. So go ahead and put A and B together on that if you want to. All right. And uh, so safety goes along with Jalen McLean, who's been in this class for a while now. Um, I don't have any fears of any of these guys decommitting uh, at this time. I, I do think that the guys who are in the class are pretty solidly in the class. You get close to December and crazy shit starts happening. So I don't want to make any promises. Uh, but yeah, just to do a quick recap at, I am adding to the current class, Reggie powers, uh, Terry and Nichols, Nicholas Rodriguez, Ernest Wilner, Jr. Jordan Seaton and chance Robinson. Now, I just want to toss a couple additional names out there. I, I have five guys who I am calling just outside the mock. Just outside the mock, some names to watch, some names to keep in mind. Dominic DK Kirk, a uh, defensive tackle from the Cleveland area. Um, I think he's from the Cleveland area, uh, who's currently committed to Washington. Um. I think that potentially the the commitment of Eric Mensa might have maybe closed the door on Dominic Kirk coming to uh, Columbus. But I, I also don't want to say that definitively because uh, it might not be the case, but I would say it hurts the chances. Uh, defensive end. And if you've been following oh, I say recruiting or our mocks, uh, during the summer, uh, this name will sound familiar. Mc Marquise Lightfoot is a guy who we had in the mock class uh, on several occasions. Uh, but he's currently committed to Miami, and uh, I do not respect Miami commitments at this time. I, I, I think. I, I don't I don't I don't uh, I'm not afraid of anyone being committed to Miami. I, I think that's a recruiting class that could very easily fall apart at some point. Um, yeah, definitely keep a close eye on that one because, yeah, things adding, things can change quickly. Adding to that, Zaquan Patterson, the safety, uh, who's currently committed to Miami, a guy who we uh, whose name we mentioned on several occasions, uh, defensive end slash linebacker King Joseph Edwards, uh, another guy who, uh. Again, we've mentioned a bunch of times. Um, I I don't know. I just. I was in very in between putting him or Nicholas Rodriguez in this class. That's that's kind of where I was at. Uh, sort of last second made the swap to put Rodriguez in. Um, so I did choose Rodriguez over. And I'm, when I say I chose him over, uh, I'm saying in regards to likelihood, I'm not saying I like one of them more or less than the other one. I'm going strictly on likelihood of them in the class, just so we're clear on that. Um, and then the fifth name I want you to keep an eye on uh, potentially joining this class. Uh, edge player defensive end linebacker sort of hybrid guy, Brooker Pitchett, um, whose official visit is supposed to be Penn State. We'll see if that actually comes through. There's been a ton of crystal ball action recently, semi recently sending him to Miami. Uh, but we all know how I feel about Miami commitments. Yep. Yeah, so, when was, that? was that just. Um, yeah, it was just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. The crystal balls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, 
Yeah. So if I have four, if we count Brooker Pitchett as committed to Miami, which he isn't, he just has a lot of crystal balls, right? So just, just so we're clear, but let's just, let's play pretend and say he's committed to Miami for a moment. I have five or is it? No, it's four. I have four current Miami commitments around this recruiting class. Yeah. <laughs> There's something to keep an eye on. I also had a, I had a solid at Michigan State Spartan, but he's decommitted now. So everyone keep an eye on Reggie Powers. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Uh, I, have a, I have a next outside group and then a whole other group of guys. But I, at that point, I'd just be reading names to you. So let's not do that. Yeah. So so currently, Jose has currently 23 commits the best average, which seems to be a pretty common thing with the house state and recruiting is always right near the top when it comes to recruits per like on average and, and they're number two overall right now. Yeah. And according, they to also the, have a, uh, according to the composite. They also have a long snapper committed in this class. I don't think he's scholarship though. So I, I don't, I'm not going to name there. They also have had some kickers uh, visit recently, but I'm just, uh, I don't, I don't normally delve too deep into the special teams, punter, kicker, um, yeah. long snapper portion of, of the recruiting. So and just I'm just getting ahead of someone being like, um, you forgot that they have a long snapper from Texas committed to this class. And I didn't forget. All right, Kyle. We're sitting. But somewhere between 25 and 30 minutes. You want to try and do any of this 2025 class? Oh, boy, I feel that if we. Dive into that 2025 class here, Jerry. We're gonna we're gonna hit like 50 minutes here. <laughs> but I guess I guess I guess I guess we can we can dig into it just a little bit here. Um, I, I want to get into it because I, I did put the work together to put together a full mock, um, and I kind of don't want that to go to waste. All right. Well, let's. But. At the same time, I do feel like if we get into it and try and do it expediently, that I'm just going to start reading a bunch of names, which I don't know if that makes for, for good podcasting. OK, so well, I'm, I'm very torn. Do you feel there should be just some names that that listeners should know then? Maybe maybe not go through the entire mock here. Which, by the way, if you want to, if you want to see um, the early mock here, um, hit up hit up uh, Discord that this Lucas.com, be a patron, and we share this information to our patrons, so you can you can see our mock classes. Yeah, the I I was about to say the Discord's free, but the recruiting channel is one of the premium, uh, one of the yeah. premium channels. Uh, so uh, but obviously, the, there's only one. There's only one commit right now for the 2025 class, and that is uh, Kevin and St. Clair from Bell Fountain or Bell Fountain, depending on which part of the country you're you're living in. Uh, but from Bell Fountain, Ohio, or part of the state too. Yes, <laughs> uh, 35th uh, currently, 35th nationally, uh, third quarterback. According to twenty four seven sports, now the composite has them a, quite a bit lower, but twenty four. We're, we're going to go with twenty four sports here, just because it fits our narrative better here. But the yeah, third best buddy. quarterback in the country. I'd just be interested to know who has him lower, because I bet it's ESPN. Oh, I'm I, sure. I, you know, I, that's that's. You know, I'm sure. All right. Running backs, I have two in this class, Jordan Davis and a uh, young man with the unfortunate name. I mean, or fortunate name, depending upon how you feel about it. Bo Jackson. Listen, do you want to be a running back named Bo Jackson who isn't? Bo Jackson. Yeah, but yeah so Bo Jackson's from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, what is it? The Villa Angela St. Joseph School. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's 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 tough. That's a that, tough that's, name to. That's a that's a tough draw. Uh, also, also a good uh, in-state running back, uh, Marquise Davis. Although, like, I already have two in the class, but I think Marquise Davis is fantastic. Uh, wide yeah. receivers. I, I I'm just going to name these guys off real quick because I don't necessarily. I don't have a great feel for the wide receivers in 2025 yet. Uh, Ohio State's so backloaded on wide receivers. This might be the first like subpar wide receiver class for Heartline. Um, when I say subpar, I mean they won't all four be top 100 players. <laughs> that's that's what I mean by that. Um, Quinton Simmons Jr., uh, Javan Boggs, Quincy Porter, and Andrew Marsh. Just going to name those guys off real quick. Um, because again, I don't have yeah, a great Quint feel for the wide receivers right now, anyway. Yeah, Quentin, Quentin Simmons is from uh Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, he sure is. Uh, in state guy. Um, tight ends, uh, tight end Landon Pace. Uh, if you're wondering, yes. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, Jared, do you? Do you know? <laughs> Do if the listeners know? If you're wondering, yes. Yes. <laughs> we are we are all getting old and close to death. That is in fact Orlando's son. Um and uh Nate Roberts, interesting, uh recently committed or excuse me, decommitted from Notre Dame. Uh visited during the Western Kentucky game. There's a real shot there. It's a real, real shot there. Uh, but don't forget about Luca Gilbert, who I, I did move out of the class. But keep an eye on Luca Gilbert regardless. Um, offensive line. Uh, at tackle, I have Carter Lowe, in-state prospect. Matty Augustine. Toledo. Yes. And Ty Haywood. Uh, all in the interior, I have Caden Strayhorn and Chauncey Gooden, who sounds like a basketball player. That's just that's just a very basketball player name, Chauncey <laughs> Gooden. Defensive end, I have Justin Hill, another in state prospect, and like Zahir, Cincinnati. yes, sir, uh, and Zahir Mathis, Kyle. Got some recent buzz, got some recent buzz on Brandon Caesar, uh, a defensive tackle. So keep keep an eye on Brandon Caesar and then defensive tackle Maxwell Roy. I, I also have as one of the I have one of one as ooh, I'm going to try that sentence again. I have those two as the two defensive tackles in this class. Uh, some additional defensive linemen to keep an eye out for would be Isaiah White and Jameel Ham. Um, an additional offensive offensive tackle to keep an eye out uh, would be Douglas. I'm gonna go Oto. O O O two. O. I'm not sure. It's U T O. Uh, he is from Hawaii. Um, linebackers. I have Anthony Saka. Uh, from God, he's from the Philly area. Am, am I correct on that, or am I misremembering? That might yes. be right. I... Saint Joseph's, yes, Sorry. Saint Joseph's, and Maddox Arnold. Maddox Arnold, another in-state prospect. Uh, he is uh, from the Cincinnati area as well. Cornerback class, y'all. If you like the current quarterback class. I mean, I'm, okay, I'm, I don't want to overhype it too much because the corner, the current cornerback class is great too. But I feel really good about this cornerback class as well. Um, Mark Zachary, he's from the Indianapolis area. Um, I, there's already a really good relationship there, and I've said it before. I'll say it again: Indiana's in-state, Ohio, Ohio State will get the best players out of Indiana. I promise you, unless they're Catholic, if they're Catholic, then maybe not. Um, Trey McNutt, uh, Trey McNutt. Um, uh, Sounds like a Buckeye already. <laughs> yeah, he's from Shaker Heights. Um, 
probably a cornerback. I think he's still listed as an athlete. Um, and if you go to his 24 seven page, he's just, he's wearing an Ohio state t-shirt in his profile pic. So, you know, you, you gotta, gotta respect the hustle on that. Um, oh, yeah. Dwayne Galloway. And if you're wondering, I don't think so. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. I don't think there's a relation there. Um, uh, but uh, this is a guy, if you go look at his recruiting numbers, does not, um, none of his rankings are going to jump out as you as all that impressive. But man, he's starting to pick up some impressive offers already. So the offers are always ahead of the rankings. The offers are always ahead of the rankings. Keep uh, keep an eye on Dwayne Galloway. And finally, Kyle, Dorian Brew. Now, Dorian Brew, uh, an interesting guy for sure. McNutt is a must get. I mean, on many levels. He's from Shaker Heights. He's a all he's already a like near five star player. And his name's McNutt. It's the Ohio, it's the Ohio State T-shirt. Yes, he is also legacy. That is correct. Uh, Dorian Brew, uh, interesting guy. Uh, he is out of Conroe, Texas. Uh, one of the best players in the country, uh, marked as a five star. Here's the thing about Dorian Brew. One. Um, already has some schedules. I think he's already been to Columbus. I think he has another uh visit scheduled and worth noting i have him as a corner i think ohio state wants him as a corner might be a wide receiver might be a wide receiver we're not 100 sure there i'm calling him a corner for now but but keep an eye on him didn't his mom graduate from osu brew i believe so I, I believe, unless I'm mixing him up with someone else, I do believe so, yes. Um, at the safety position, she was a track star, I think. That does sound familiar, yes. Um, I believe you are correct. Uh, there, there is a reason why they already have such a great relationship Um this early with a kid from Texas and is already made, like I say, he's already made one visit. He already has another visit scheduled. Um, when you get that sort of early, like this early, that sort of relationship and that sort of travel um, with a kid that far out of state, there's normally a reason why. Uh, safeties. Uh, I have safety, Ethan long. Um, he is a multi-sport athlete out of Connecticut and Cody Haddad. That's how I'm going to pronounce, uh, attempt to pronounce that H A D D A D. Yeah. Yeah. The kid out of uh, St. Ignatius. That is correct, sir. Uh, some additional uh, names to keep an eye on edge rusher, Chris Burgess, Defensive back Mason Alexander, cornerback Devin Williams, and linebacker Weston Port. That wasn't bad, Kyle. I think that was what, like 10 minutes? Yeah, good job. That was good. I, and I didn't just read the names. I felt like I, I, I did a good selective discussion of each player. I think I think I did a good job there. I think we did a good job there. So Kyle, that's two mocks for the price of one. Y'all showed up for one mock, we gave you two. You're welcome. One mock. What other podcast one. does that for you? Kyle, has there ever been a podcast in the history of Ohio State media where they gave you a double mock class? This is the first for me. <laughs> <laughs> Who else does that? Who else does that? People with something to lose and respectability. That's who. <laughs> it's really way too early to be doing a 2025 mock class at this point, but screw it. We, we have fun here. We don't take things a little, we don't take things too seriously. 
Um, I feel much better about this 2025 mock than I did the first time we did it. This is the second time we've done a 2025 mock. Um, I'm sure it's still almost entirely wrong, but I feel better about it. And that's what's important to me. As Kyle pointed out before, come join the Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Come join our Patreon. We've picked up some new patrons recently. We're on a good streak with that. Um, all of our new patrons, you are greatly appreciated. Um, that being said, we still need some assistance. Kyle and I want to invest into the show some more. We need a budget to do that. If it's a thing you've been thinking about doing, uh, I would greatly appreciate it. You can get a, I believe it is a 12% discount if you pay for an entire year up front. Um, and, and for what it's worth, if you're a current sloop cat and you're listening to this, you could always up, you could always up your, you always up your donation a, a little bit. You know, you guys, do you know you earn more sloop coins if you are at a higher donation tier? By the way, the Discord has an economy uh, that we use almost entirely for gambling. But the, the Discord server does have its own economy, uh, and you don't need to be a patron uh, to participate in, in said economy. And when I say economy, I mean gambling. But please know that the coins have no actual monetary value, and therefore it is not actually gambling. They are just fun points. And there's tipping allowed. The future, Jared, maybe tipping is tipping allowed <laughs> i we do have a we i mean we do have a paypal we have a paper uh sloopcast at gmail.com so yes uh sure <laughs> yeah why not anything else jared anything else you got in your i was just about your... to ask you if you have anything in kyle's corner uh you want to talk about lou holtz seems like everybody's talking about him Oh, Lou Holtz. Or do you want to talk about uh, Brady Quinn's comments? I, I don't know about Brady Quinn's comments. What well, I mean, he, he just, I mean, pretty much all, all he said, all he said that it was, is that uh, Coach Day's comments was bizarre. But, it, in, you know, it didn't, wasn't Brady Quinn here just earlier saying shit about cj stroud and trying to lower his uh his stock draft was it wasn't that re recently yes. so uh so uh brady quinn you can you can go right to hell you know yeah. just <laughs> yeah he was uh floating totally unfound unfounded uh information about cj stroud uh Quinn can stick it. I agree. And by the way, he's also, you know, I don't care if he's from Dublin. He's a he's a Notre Dame guy. I, I yep. don't forget. Uh, listen. And Lou Holtz is like, I'm not going to apologize. I believe what I said. OK, so you're dumb. Cool. That's all I heard. This whole Ryan Day is not good in big games narrative is factually wrong. We talked about this during Scarlet and Grade on Monday. He has a it, well, what's the number? Seventy four percent winning percentage against top twenty five teams, something like that, which is the most mm -hmm. in the country. Yeah. And heck, heck, I mean, <laughs> Lou Holt hasn't even. Lou Holt hasn't even been around since the last time Notre Dame beat Ohio State. God. <laughs> Lou Holtz isn't old enough to see the last. Oh my. Ooh, god damn, Kyle. That's a that that's that's how we end the show right there. Ooh. I mean, he, 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 did, he did win a Kyle, national Kyle, title. Kyle, he did win Kyle, a national title. Kyle. But that's you got to know when to end. You you already stuck the dagger in the heart, man. It's time to walk away from the show. All right, let's that end was, the show then. That, that was that's how, that's just <laughs> how you end the show. Tonight's ending music will be uh, brought to you by Courtney from work. Uh, they're a Columbus based band. A whole lot of fun. So with all that being said, uh, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music and of course, watch local podcasters. Once again, this is Courtney from work.